Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of CMYK Play. I'm Teresa, your host. This week we are going to be experimenting to create a colorway called Wedgwood. We do these experiments using the primary color CMYK, C standing for cyan, M standing for magenta, Y standing for yellow, and K standing for black. In these videos I will be using stock mixtures, dry powder mixtures, and occasionally a combination of the two when necessary. Everything you need to know about what I'm doing, what dye I'm using, and what form I'm using it in, and any other relevant information will be located in the description box below. These experiments are done using 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon sock yarn. Please keep in mind that there is not a right or wrong way to do this. These are just my experiments and how I'm doing them. There are a few things that can change the outcome of your experiments at home. If your water is more or less acidic than mine, if you choose to use a different dye, or a different yarn base that I'm using. I encourage you to take this information and use it as a jumping off point in your own experiments. And with that being said, let's go visit Pass Me in the Dye Studio and see about creating Wedgwood. Okay, welcome to another episode of CMYK Play. Today, the color that we are trying to get is called Wedgwood. I'm gonna pop it up on the screen here for you so you can take a look at the color. Uh, this season, <laughs> the CMYK values are giving me a little bit of a run for my money. So for Wedgwood, the CMYK values is cyan's 35, magenta's 8, and black is 35. So even amounts of blue and black, are, is this color is a fairly light color, and even amounts of blue and black, to me, seem like it's going to be really dark. But... As with every other episode, <laughs> I am going to just give it a whirl here and then we will work our way from there. We're going to be working with the cyan, the black, and magenta in some form. I'm not 100% um, sure that is going to be powder, but we'll see. Um, like I said, uh, I'm going to start with the powder and see where that takes us. So let's start with the values at face value. Let's do 0.35 of cyan, 0.35 of black, and then whatever. I'm gonna I am gonna go ahead and just add the magenta in. I want to get the the basis of what those values make, and then we will work from there. So it's a little windy today here at the studio so I apologize if uh, number one you hear it but also the scale might get a little screwy so we might have to close the door hopefully it won't be it won't be too bad and we won't have to do that but let's see what happens Alright, so we got 0.35 of the blue. Oh, I couldn't have done that more perfect if I tried. There we go. 0.35 of the blue. Point three five of true black. All right. Sorry about that. Point three five of the black, and then I'm actually gonna make that an even smaller. We're gonna do point eight point zero eight. Oh, 
got water in there. <clears throat> This is quite a vibrant color, I believe. All right, so let's see what that got us. So it was 0.35 of cyan, 0.35 of black, and 0 0.08 of the magenta. And that's a pretty rich color. pretty rich color very jeweled very moody so we're gonna start with that <clears throat> we're gonna start with that and then go on from there so I will meet you over at the pots and we will get started on attempt number one in goes our first attempt as always, uh, we do, uh, as always, uh, there is no citric acid. This is just plain tap water. We start out that way. And then as the water heats up, I will add the citric acid into the water. We're gonna turn some heat on. I always turn it all the way up to get started and then once it comes to temperature I will turn it back down until the die is set. So the highest that this um, this is called an induction burner and the highest that this goes is 460 degrees so I always turn it all the way up to begin with. We're going to get our skein. As always, <clears throat> these experiments are done on my fuzzy fingering base, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and that is very dark. So, we'll see. I'm going to stir this around until I start to feel some heat in the water, and then I will be back with you to add the citric acid and decide where we are going to go with this color next so i'll see you in a few moments okay i'm back i've been stirring for a little while i'm starting to feel some heat in the water so i'm going to add two tablespoons of citric acid and i want to show you guys where we're at here it is very dark just like i predicted um and there's quite a bit of dye in the water yet so this is probably going to get even darker, if you can see that in the pot there. There is quite a bit of dye still in the water. So <clears throat> we are going to try something a little different with the next one to see if I can get a brighter blue, a toned, like when I look at that picture, I see toned down brighter blue. So, I have an idea, and I want to see what we can come up with. So, I'm going to go ahead and let this heat up. We're going to go back over to the dye table and work on our next attempt. Okay, so, my thoughts on this, this blue here that we just made... That is border. That is that is pretty close to navy. I feel like we just made a navy blue, um, which is gorgeous. I mean, that's a gorgeous blue. I can't wait to see what that looks like when it's dry. But it's not quite. It's not nearly that picture that we were looking at. So, this is what I would like to do for try number two. I would like to use dry powder for the blue. And then I want to mess around and see if I can get that blue a little bit brighter before we add some black in. And to do that, we are going to use yellow. <laughs> that is a, uh, because if we, the magenta here is, it's, you know, it's 
creating that purpley purpley hue and the color that what I'm seeing in that photo is not purpley so I'm going to just negate the magenta entirely for this next try and we're gonna mess around a little bit here so we're gonna start out with same as before 0.35 of the Caribbean blue our cyan I guess it would help if I turned on the scale Thankfully, this, the breeze here today doesn't seem to be messing with the scale. Thankfully. Point three five. So point three five of the dry powder. Oops. This would help if we poured it in there. Well, I'm having one of those days. Where everything I do is just makes no sense. <laughs> All right, so there is our, there's our blue. And I'm gonna mix that up. Okay, so we've been taught that yellow and blue make green. But blue and a little bit of yellow make a brighter blue. There's a fine line that you walk between enough to brighten it and too much that it turns green. So what I want to do, and I know that these little bits can get a little tedious, but it matters. I'm going to use our good old neighbor, <laughs> our good old friendly neighborhood pinch. And we are going to add pinches of yellow in to brighten up this blue a little. So this is what it looks like before the yellow. That's what it looks like before the yellow. That's 0.35. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit. We're going to add the pinches of the liquid in. And we want to do it just enough times that we don't run the risk of green happening. So we did one sixteenth. We did one. And this is what that looks like. You can't really see too much of a difference. This is slight. It's slight, but you can't, it's like visually, you can't see it very well. <clears throat> so we're going to add another one. funny because when I put the the yellow in when it's still floating on the top I can see green <laughs> it's really cool chemistry so let's see what that looks like let's see if we can see anything notable here so that was two Right. 
So I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it's definitely getting lighter. This was the no yellow one and then two. It's definitely lighter ever so slightly. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go one more and see what that looks like. Because like I said, there's a fine line. If we add too much of this, it's definitely gonna start getting green and that's not what we want. So that was three. It's three one sixteenth is almost a quarter teaspoon. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, there's a lot of magenta floating around here. Okay. All right. So the differences are still subtle from this one to this one, but it is, it is much brighter than the, the all by itself. This was no yellow, one, two, three. So I kinda, I'm kinda starting to see a little green, so I, I don't wanna push it any farther. That's lightened it up pretty significantly. So now what I want to do is I'm going to start putting black stock in. So that was 0.35 of the the cyan, of the dry powder. And then we did 3 one sixteenths of the yellow to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And now we're going to start adding in liquid black. So I'm going to move these so it doesn't get confusing. So this is where we started. This is where we are right now. Actually, you know what? There's a lot of, I wanna be able to see the definite difference. So I'm gonna do another little paper towel. I wanna be able to see it pretty clearly. All right, so this is where we are right now with no black. This is just the cyan and the, the yellow. So now we're gonna, I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon seems like a good idea. Let's start with half a teaspoon. So we're gonna do half a teaspoon of black. Now this is going to kind of tone it down to that that sort of muted blue that the Wedgwood is presenting, at least to my eyes. And mine eyes are the most important eyes because mine eyes are the ones that are making decisions. <laughs> so, it's my story and I'm sticking to it. See what that looks like now. All right, so a little bit moodier. It's darkened it up slightly. Now, this was our attempt number one. So you can see that there's a dramatic difference there. So I'm gonna add another half a teaspoon. Point three five dry powder of the cyan, three one sixteenth of yellow, and two half teaspoons of black. Now that is getting in the ballpark there of what I see in that photo. That's getting in the ballpark. I want to let this sit for a few moments and dry out a little bit. I just want to give that a few moments there. All right, so that's after sitting for a few moments. This was one half teaspoon, two half teaspoons. So I think I want to go one more, one more half teaspoon. 
<coughs> Oops. Alright, that got a little blue one from the other paper towel. Oh, it looks like I'm killing a small forest here. <laughs> Alright. So, that's two, that's three. I don't know. Too dry a little bit. Hmm. I'm gonna wait a moment and see what that looks like when it dries up a little bit. I think I'm gonna give this one a go. I'm gonna give this one a go for number two. Um, I'll meet you over at the pots. Here we are with attempt number two. Definitely a dramatic shade lighter. And the attempt number one. I'm kind of excited to see what this is going to look like on the yarn. Alright, let's give it a go. I'm going to turn on the heat. And I'm going to go grab our skein. And here's our skein. So, significantly different color. I am going to go ahead and stir this for a little while until I feel the heat, and then I will be back with you to add the citric acid and see where we are. Okay, I'm starting to feel some heat in the water. There's quite a bit of dye still in the water. So my first impressions here, um, I'm getting real tealy vibes, but there's a lot more dye to get soaked in and to strike. So we cannot pass judgments right this second. Cause as you can see, if you can see that, there's quite a bit of dye in there. So. I do think we're on the right path though. I do think that as far as shade wise, we're on the right, we're on the right track here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that warm up and strike some more. I'm gonna let this warm up and strike the yarn some more before we move on to the next attempt. Cause I just kind of want to get a, a like a better sense of the vibe of this, what this is ultimately gonna look like before I make adjustments. So I'll be back with you in a few moments. All right, so a lot of the dye is starting to strike. There's not as much in the water as there was before and I, it's really, it's hard to tell when the yarn is wet, but I am getting a tealy vibe. The one thing I know for certain is that I need to add a little more black. So I have an idea. I'll meet you back at the pots or I'll meet you back at the dye table to uh, brainstorm with you. Okay, so attempt number one, attempt number two. Obviously drastically different. Um, like I said, it's going to be a little hard to tell for sure. I'm getting teal vibes, but as it sets, that changes. That could be pretty close. I think two is pretty close. Um, so for three, I want to play a little bit. I am going to stay with the dry powder for the cyan. Let me wipe this out a little bit and we're gonna keep that that amount we're gonna keep that 0.35 amount I am going to put the magenta back in the 0.08 
0.35 dry, 0.08 dry. I'm going to knock down one of the 1 16th of the yellow and I'm going of the liquid and I am going to bump up to we're going to start with one teaspoon we're going to start with two teaspoons of black so let's measure that out So we are going to do the 0.35 again of the Caribbean blue. Oh, well that's way overboard. So 0.35 of the Caribbean blue. We're going to do 0 0.08 of magenta. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to I want to do 0 0.04 of magenta. I don't know why, just something's telling me to back down on the magenta a little bit, which it always is. So, we're going to do 0 0.04 of magenta. Water action. So this is, I think the magenta is what's given it this royal blue, this royal blue to it. So I'm actually going to add in the yellow before I paper towel test this. And add the black. Okay, let's see what that looks like. This is 0.35 of dry powder cyan, 0.04 of magenta the dry powder and two of the one sixteenth pinch. Hmm. That is definitely a very beautiful blue. This is one, attempt one, this is attempt two, and this is the beginnings of attempt three. So I'm gonna let this set for a moment. I feel like my gut is on to something though. If we've learned anything from the past few weeks here at Fuzzy Whatnot, we should trust our gut. So, I'm gonna add the two teaspoons of black in. I'm gonna use the, I need to do some dishes. <laughs> it's like my least favorite part of this job. One, two, three, I want to see what three looks like. So that was three half teaspoons. And I want to see how rich that is. Before I add the fourth one in, which would effectively make two teaspoons of the black. So that was no black, three 
half teaspoons of black. Um, and I feel like we're crouching closer to that navy again. Maybe just a lighter shade of the navy. So I'm actually... I'm actually going to go with that. Because I'm afraid if I add in more black, we're going to get... We're going to get a little too dark again. So, that was... Half teaspoon, one, two, three. I will meet you over at the pots for our third attempt. Here's our third attempt. On the heat and I am going to grab our third attempt stain. Here's our stain. Let's see here. Hmm. Well now I'm gonna go ahead and stir this. I'm feeling pretty good about attempt number three. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this. I'll be back with you once I feel some heat and I'm pretty excited, so we'll see you in a few minutes. And I'm starting to feel some heat. And I'll tell you what, guys, I am getting all the, you might have nailed this color feels right now. <laughs> There's still a bit of dye in the water, but I am, so far with what I'm seeing, I am quite pleased with attempt number three. All you're good. All you're good. And keep in mind that these are wet so they're always going to look darker when they're wet but i am pretty pleased with the temp number three it's got the moodiness but it's not super rich like the first attempt um it's got the, a little bit more of a brightness to it but it's not super bright like attempt number two so i'm gonna say it's attempt number three but we'll have to wait and see until they're washed and dried so I am going to send you back to present me where we can talk about how these turned out. And welcome back. So let's, let's get into going over the colorways. So attempt number one was even amounts of cyan and black. We did 0.35 of both with, uh, measuring out dye powder. And this is attempt number one. Is it, this is pretty navy to me. A little too dark for what we were going for. Still quite beautiful though. Attempt number two, we did a combination of... Actually, attempt number two and attempt number three, we for both of those, we did a combination of powder and liquid stock. So, for attempt number two, we kept 0.35 grams of the cyan of the dry powder. And then we did um, three of the 1 16th pinch of yellow liquid stock and one and a half teaspoon of black liquid stock and this is attempt number two very very bright gorgeous color a little too bright for what we were aiming for attempt number three my personal favorite you guys will have to let me know down in the comments uh, attempt number three we strayed a little bit away from the formulas that were recommended online, uh, the CMYK values. Attempt number three, we did 0.35 grams of the cyan powder, 0 0.04 grams of the magenta powder, two of the 116 pinches of the yellow liquid stock, and we kept the one and a half teaspoons of the black stock. And I, I'm just in love, you guys. This is the one. This is the one that I'm going to go with. You guys, like I said, you guys can let me know in the comments um, which one you either thought was close to the picture or just liked in general. Um, so here are all three together. These three will be available on my website when this airs. Uh, a couple of add many things. Uh, I have a new colorway. 
um, and this colorway I'm calling Succulence and Sunshine and it was created from colorways that we created in CMYK episodes. All of the all of the colors used are from CMYK episodes. Um, this is the colorway. Succulence and Sunshine and I am just in love. I did record the dye session for this colorway. That is going to go up on Patreon next week. All of the the episodes and attempts that I used for to create this colorway will be part of that video that's going to go up on Patreon next week. So I'm not going to go over it right now, but this, like I said, this was created using the colorways that we've created in this series. If you are interested in exclusive content that goes a little bit deeper into methods, different methods of dyeing, or if you just want to support the channels, you can become a patron on Patreon. And I have all kinds of fun things planned for my patrons. Uh, like I said, this video will be going up um, probably midweek next week on Patreon and will only be available on Patreon. So the link for that is in the description along with the listing for these. And I am just, I am pumped about this dye session. Um, one other thing that I wanted to go over with you, I know I said at the beginning of the season that there were some colors on the palettes that I picked for this project that I wasn't going to do um, because I thought they would make boring episodes. But I decided that I, what I'm going to do is, I'll, I'm going to show you the two colors. There's like a, like a, like a, kind of like a gray. When I, when I look at it, I say brownish gray. I'm going to pop it up on the screen here for you. And there's also a very pale yellow color for this set. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do two attempts to e get each one and I'm going to combine them all in the next video. So the next video will be creating two colorways that has two attempts each because I think it's going to be fairly simple to get those colors, but I still want to show you how I did it. Um, so I don't, I don't think there'll be enough to make an episode for each one. And then there are five more colorways for this season. So still have a bit to go yet for this season. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And share this video if you feel like it's something worth sharing. Thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time. Happy dying!